Hey E36 Fanatic, Steven here. Today I'm working on another four-cylinder BMW E36. This is a 1995. Today I'm actually going to replace the alternator and I'll show you why. Go ahead and rev it up. You hear that noise? Now it makes that it makes that squeaking kind of uh, bad baron noise more when it's really cold outside however he's noticed when he revs up the vehicle a bit it makes it it makes it quite bad as well then and then too i'd already replaced the water pump before and i've replaced this idler pulley right here it was making some noise and so now the rest of the noise seems to be coming from the alternator so I'm going to go ahead and replace that as well. Luckily the alternator is really easy to replace on this vehicle. Alright so the first thing you got to do to get to your alternator, you're going to need to go ahead and loosen up on this boot right here. This You could technically do it from here too and just pull off the mass airflow there but the more room the better. So loosen it up on here, you got this sensor and then you got this one right here, pull those two off. You got two 10 millimeters right here. Remove those. Okay, so next thing you want to go ahead and do is go get the power, the uh, serpentine belt out of the way. Here's your tensioner right here. Just turn it. Now I highly suggest that you make a diagram of the belt. Next thing you're going to want to do, oh man. So when I spin this alternator, you can hear that noise it's making. Now that noise is about, you know, times 10 times 20 when the thing's actually spinning fast. So there's another, once you actually got it off the belt, you can spin it and tell. Now you have to remove this idler pulley on the four cylinder motors to get to this alternator. And this would be a very good time to change the, this idler pulley. However, on this car, it's brand new. So there's no way I'm changing a brand new part that I just changed two weeks ago. I'm just going to pop it off, set it over there. When you remove it, remember you got this metal cap here, it's supposed to be placed back like this in this orientation. Set that there. Another thing while you're here, changing if you're changing this alternator, take a look at your belt obviously, but also take a look at this tensioner. See how this tensioner is free spinning like that? Also, I noticed when it's moving at high RPMs, the tensioner moves a little bit. It's got a little play. So this is bad. The tensioner and the pulley's bad. I'm not going to change that right now, though, because the local auto parts store does not have it. So I'm going to worry about the alternator. So next thing you're going to want to go ahead and do, like I said, this is a really easy job to do. You have two bolts holding in this alternator. One right here and then one down here. They are 13 millimeters if I recall, but somehow I found a standard that works that works for it too. Now another thing you're going to want to do is of course you're going to want to cut power to your battery because if I recall that hot wire is always getting juice um, to this alternator. Don't hold me to it, but if I recall it's always getting juice. So you're going to want to cut power to the battery before you start messing with the wiring in the back. Alright, there's that second one. Alright, next step will be to pull that battery. If I recall, because I've pulled this thing before, these things before, it's got a big red wire and a small black one, and that's it. Uh, but you can't really get to it. Like, I don't like to try and get to it while it's still attached here. I'd rather pull it out of here first and then get to it, because it's got a little, this wire right here has a little bit of uh, pull. So, what I do, take some PB blaster, get it in these area right here and you'll understand why I do that here in a minute because it is usually a pain to get these things in and out 
and the reason being is when you bolt when you put a bolt through here it actually it's got like these two little pistons on the inside of this alternator and the threads they actually compress into this bracket right here so i got my handy dandy and look at that that was pretty easy i'm happy with that And there we go. All right. Next step is to get these two wires out. If I recall, one of them's a 13 and one of them's a 10. That's my, that's what I'm betting. I tell you guys, I love working on these four cylinders. Everything's so easy on them for the most part. All right, now here's the alternator. It's all screwed up. I wonder where this popped off from. One of the studs popped out of the casing and I had to crack the plastic to even get, it, get the uh, nut off of the stud. But you can see these two little, stay still. You can see this this metal right here actually compresses in when you fit in the alternator and put the bolt in, and that's what makes it really really tight. So, and there is my old used alternator, ready to go. All right, so I got the new alternator from uh, I picked it up from O'Reilly's. This thing's gonna go, cost you about 200 to 230 bucks probably. Might be able to get cheaper offline. Or if you're like me and got an account with them, you might be able to get cheaper. So when you pick it up though, there's three options, at least for this vehicle, there were an alternators they put on these E36s. You're gonna want the one, if you have an idler pulley that blocks the way on the alternator, you're gonna wanna get the one that does that. It's got a second, uh, it's got a second space for a bolt because one of them doesn't come with these two bolts right here um, to put two bolts in. The other thing is, now the reason I'm changing this thing is because the bearing bearings inside are making a horrendous noise. But there are, of course, your alternator can just go bad, like your regulator can go bad, and then your alternator won't change your battery, charge your battery. Um, this car has about 140, 150,000 miles on it, so sometimes you can actually rebuild these things and change the bearings. But with the amount of miles on it, I, f I figured it was best to go ahead and change the whole alternator since it was already going bad. <clears throat> so first thing you're going to want to do is get it wired up. Um, should be pretty obvious which ones go on, which wires go on which. Okay, so at this point... I'm popping in a new alternator. Don't really have to spray the new one, but it just makes it even easier. So why not? Come on. There we go. Okay, so Sometimes these things aren't as easy to put in as the new ones. Uh, this is a remanufactured unit. Which can make it a little more of a pain. But nothing we can't handle. Alright, so the best way to do this is get the bottom stud in first. Get the bottom one in first and then go with the top one. The top one's easy to get, it's the bottom one that's the, that can be the tough one to do. So, I got a bottom one partially threaded in. Now, doing the top. Tighten those two bolts, there we go. And I already got these wires in the back, make sure that cover's on in the back. Now, you've got that idler pulley. If you remember what I told you, 
just keep it aligned like this and you won't have any trouble if you want to go ahead and replace it i would they're pretty cheap i'm gonna just pop that back on Once you're done with the alternator and everything, putting the belt back on, I suggest testing it before you put your mass airflow sensor and everything back on. Don't worry, the car runs just fine without it. Well, I mean, it runs a little rough, but it runs. Get everything back in. Mass airflow. Cruise control. All right, hit it. Hit it. Well, as you can hear, the annoying noise is gone, taking care of that problem. 